morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever the fluff you are. Welcome to what, as you may have noticed in the title, may possibly be a bit of a controversial one. Um, ADHD and the way kids, parents, family members, society and schools treat kids with ADD, ADHD, autism, the whole kit and caboodle. As someone who grew up who was diagnosed with it, I have a bit of a standpoint of where to go and I have a bit of an understanding of the ins and outs of things and with how my parents struggled to deal with it. Now, off the bat, I am just going to get this little thing out of the way which bothers me and a lot of other people who have ADD, ADHD, autism, all of that, is the, oh my god, I just wish that my child was normal like everybody else. That phrase alone is a soul killer just saying that around the kid or around anybody even adults that have it is a soul killer it's literally as if you are saying you reject the person that they are you reject their personality you reject their intelligence their intellect and everything and you just want them to be normal and quiet placid be a plastic facsimile of something else and somebody else Please, for the love of everything which is fluffy and cute, don't use that phrase. It's, it literally is a soul killer. It's a heartbreaker. It will kill the child from within. It's the same with the way that everything was done in different ways. Of Let's just put you on Ritalin. Let's, let's put you on anything which can numb anything of the personality and the person that you are you know anything that could just kill you and just put you in a box don't just don't ever put people through that because that was the worst thing I ever went through chemically in in primary school was being given medications that locks you down and just makes you quiet and makes you not who you really are which yeah I know with the colours that are behind me that's to some people out there that might be a little bit complex and where my problem comes from but no no there's a lot of other issues and both of them are totally separate but I mean this bit is just going to be too the parents or the adults moving to the schools. If you have a child with ADD, ADHD, autism, whatever, please do whatever it is that nurtures it. Count to a hundred with them, go through the alphabet with them, and then recite everything in reverse, and then go through basic, you know, even just basic maths and things like that. It's by the time I was in primary school, I could come over well over a hundred and I could recite the alphabet all the way through and in reverse and I could do all sorts of other fantastic things. Now I've lost the get that gateway, I've lost that power, that spirit, that gem, whatever it is, it's been locked away because society wanted me as a person to be normal and not have this superpower gift whatever you want to classify it as but going back in um always do whatever it takes to nurture the kids don't just bung them in front of a tablet you know don't just go oh you know we've got i haven't really got it here but just using something i've got out of my blue ray box there is. Don't always rely on TV, the internet, your iPads, your tablets, whatever. 
for the entertainment of the, of the kids. Please don't. Please nurture them. Because they could be the rock stars, the, the super scientists. They could be the cancer curists. They could be the new Neil Armstrongs. You know, they, they could be your, your Nikola Teslas and, you know, your Benjamin Franklins. They could be the greatest of people. But by not nurturing them and not helping them out and just giving up because it's hard. You're not just killing your future, you're killing your child's future. And take that from someone whose future was literally stripped away from them by the way that the educational systems and everything was. We were never understood, we were never nurtured. My parents did everything that they flipping well could to nurture me. It's like my parents did everything they possibly could. My dad was a bit of a waste of space at times, but mum tried everything that she possibly could to help me be nurtured. Like, I was always getting put on report for being disruptive and unruly because I knew everything inside out. I was bored. I was in primary and I was bored out of my little mind. So I was shipped off to a, you know, a learning support school or a special school for one entire term, one entire year. Went there and basically I learnt how to self-moderate. It wasn't exactly pleasant, but I learnt how to self-moderate. The educational system now may be a bit better where we don't need to always have to go to special schools and special places to do that. But still, it's not it's not a good thing. There's no, it's not beer or anything. It's just an iron brew. Iron brew. But you know, the way that the schooling system was whilst I was in education was a mess. Let alone the other things which are to do with like all that lot and the section twenty eight and everything. I'm not going into that because that's a totally different minefield. But the two kind of in interact sometimes. But there's a lot of things in there, you know, like when your kids are going from, let's say, like learning piano or keyboard and they get bored of that and then they want to play the cornet or the clarinet or something. They're, they're testing themselves in that field. It's same with they might love football for a year or two and then go to rugby and then they might go back or they might want to learn cricket and then learn baseball and then go basketball and go swimming. Don't jump off the deep end with them. Don't lose your rag with them when they just drop something which you may have spent a few hundred to a couple of thousand pounds on. It's not their fault. If they don't wholeheartedly love it and fall for it and fall literally fall in love with it, they will they won't stick to it. It's same with through high school or through the end of their primary schooling. If they're starting to learn a few things which are a bit more com complex, like by the age of five, I knew what <laughs> certain things were. I was learning how steam could turn a turbine and make electricity because I was interested in like you know trucks and trains and steam engines and all sorts of things you know it's like I corrected a guy in a garage about a fan that was going side to side because he was just saying you know it's moving from left to right right to left whatever because it, no it's oscillating it was probably the wrong usage of the word but uh, where I got oscillation from an oscillating from I have no idea but I was the age of four or five at the time and I could throw oscillating and oscillations out there and things like that and I had a grasp of things that I should never have had a grasp of from a young age and I knew it and I wholeheartedly dove into it and then through life that got pretty much beaten out of me at times you know I went from loving science to hating science I went to loving like home ec and you know catering and all of that lot to hating it I loved music then I hated it and then I loved it again then I fell out with it I loved history and fell out with it you know I loved geography and geographical stuff and 
geology and things like that and then I fell out with it. That wasn't my fault. That was literally the way I'm wired up here. I am a, a nerd. I love games. I love computers. I love messing around with things. Your child could be the same way. Same with if they come back from science class and they've got a book on nuclear science and they're touching on the nuclear stuff and a bit of nuclear physics and they're fully interested in it. Don't just wave them off and go oh, go look at the internet please sit with them and help them through it anytime that they come to you with little struggles and little things even if it's well over your head look at it read it try to break it down try to break it down for yourself and for them then if you can't do it then yes go onto the internet and use the internet because the internet is your friend for that but there's also all the ways around it because you can also go and look at things around like you know how nuclear reactor reactors work things like that and then you can always use like three mile island and chernobyl and fukushima and even wind scale up here you know wind scale cumbria calder hall you can use places like that as examples of the brilliance but also the negatives then you can then go into Einstein and his theories and what happened with how to get rockets into space and where we came from with the nuclear weapons that we've got now and what the Tsar Bomber was and what Castle Bravo was and things like that. You can go into magical details. You can still cherry pick and if the kid wants to know more, explain more. And then if you feel that them and yourself can handle it, look at some of the, doc the documentaries, because the documentaries on these things are amazing. But please don't lose your rag with your kids. Don't crush them with the, oh my God, why, why the hell can't you be normal? It honestly is a soul killer because as I said, you are literally saying that you're rejecting the person, the personality and everything that they've got to just become a plastic facsimile of something. Because I learned the hard way that learning how to become normal means locking away the thing that makes you tick, that makes you you, makes you the individual. Locking that away destroys who you are. And you can never get it back. I can look at a computer and I can understand it. And all, all sorts of other stuff. And I can still understand how a boiler works for a steam engine. And all sorts of other things. But I can't get back to that innocent, fantastic brain the size of a planet. But nowhere to use it feeling. I can't get back to that. Which saddens me. It makes me feel like I cheated myself out of a future that I could never now have because I succumbed to, oh, just shut up and go and sit in a corner and read. Oh, get on with it, you know. This is how society is, is I know you guys have a lot of work to do and I know that you've got a house to keep and you've got meals to cook and a lot of other stuff but even if it's just setting aside a couple of extra minutes just to spend with your kids please do because sitting them on the tablets and what sitting them in front of TV and sticking a control pad in their hand and just going go play isn't really going to help nurture them as a as a character as a person it's just cheating them out of something out of a gift doesn't really have to just mean ADD ADHD autistic kids it can be any child that has a spark every child has a spark but this was more aimed at parents of kids with 
ADD, ADHD, autism, all of that, because that is where the, the worst of the bottling them up and kind of like sticking the genie back in the bottle is coming from. And please don't, because you're only going to cause fractions and fractures within the child because they're going to be even more confused they're going to be confused because they can sit there in class and whiz through all of the you know schoolwork in a snap but then they're bored and they've got nothing else to do so they look around start looking at the posters again start counting the spots in the ceiling you know where you've got like artexy ceilings or like you know roof like ceiling tiles or whatever you know they might start counting the lines in the bricks if you've got like you know an area where it's got a wall which is exposed brickwork you know they might start looking at the pointing you know they could be counting the millimeters on a ruler in maths because they've aced all their stuff and just sat there bored and going through things this is how their brains work is they're still trying to figure out how to get all of this stuff because they've got that super genius intelligence and something in there which is plugged onto them but they don't know how to utilize it because to use a different terminology their software is different to their hardware their body isn't capable yet of understanding it and them even as a person isn't fully aware of their being their speciality you know i went to school with a load of different people there was people of all skill levels intellectually there was people who could whip things through but didn't have ADD, adhd or at least it wasn't you know diagnosed at that time maybe they are now i don't know some of us were a lot more open and a lot more on the bridge with it. And literally kind of like, hi, here I am. Yes, I'm a hyperactive child. Ah! That's literally how we were because it's how we are. Same with if you go from a small primary school with your small group of friends who you can get on with and you magically all manage to stay in the same year group or at least the same like form tutor group anyway. You're going to be split off so that child that student is then going to be struggling amongst themselves if they've not quite learned the little key aspects of how to kind of like self-variate and hush it down a little bit it takes a lot it takes a heck of a lot but getting it back is something i haven't figured out yet i'm socially awkward i've always been socially awkward and i always will be but I mean, maybe, maybe as I've grown as an adult, I've grown into it and it's naturally calmed down on its own and become my nerdiness of knowing about roller coasters, you know, knowing about B&Ms and Bologram Abias and your Intamins and your Vacomas and your, your Aerodynamics and your SNS Sanseis and, you know, what makes a good Woody, what makes a good Steel Coaster, all of these things. Learn, knowing about trains and, you know all sorts of other bits and pieces maybe that's where mine's gone mine has never been that strong i was always kind of like marginal and borderline as they would say but they still classified me as because i was the rambunctious you know i was the disruptive person because i would walk around and try to help people do things and kind of do the teacher's work for them that's me that's how i was maybe your child is different maybe your child has already not learned how to control it with the self-control and not needing medication but as i say don't don't ever wish for your child to be normal because normal what is normal what is normal because normal 
is life. Normal is the way that a person just is. They might be loud and rambunctious because that's how they are. That's their personality. Would you seriously want someone who is the life of the party to just zip and just become a boring person and sit on the sidelines and not get involved because that's effectively what some people are saying is just shh sit over there and just go away and as I went on for quite a long time the second part of it as Growing up for that as a child, who grew up with it, as a child, don't, don't hate your parents for not knowing what they're doing and how they're struggling with you. Don't hate your parents. Don't detest them. Und try to understand that they are trying their hardest and they don't know what the heck is going on because it's very hard especially if they're coming home from work and they're absolutely cream crackered and you're bouncing off the walls because you've been bored or you know you've won something at school Yes, it's okay. You can be loud, you can be rambunctious, but when they do give you the the stares of just don't push it, or they do say not right now, please try to slowly pull your filter in and slowly let the valve go. They will talk to you about it eventually maybe over dinner maybe over tea maybe while you're you know doing your homework if they're helping you with your homework you know don't scattergun and bombard your parents with everything all at once like you know a million miles and everything try your hardest to bring the filters in relevant things first then expand on to friends and where you came from with this award or what happened in PE or kind of you know the first time that a teacher asked you straight off the bat about a science question or a maths question or a history question Try to keep it light and brief and try not to go off on your random rambles like I do. <laughs> That's my downfall is my random rambles and rolling along and tangents that fly here, there and everywhere. Just butterfly it if you need to. Just don't machine gun everything in. Just be gentle and be light and easy because if you're going on about something that they may not understand because quite possibly they may have learned it but forgotten it or it was part of the subject that they didn't learn because obviously your educational systems change things advance and because some of the things that I was taught and maybe your parents were taught weren't taught then or were taught then but were kind of like either higher set or more A-level and you've learnt different sets of it. Don't go harsh on your parents, same as I've asked your parents to go harsh on you. It's just how life is. And I understand that you have this whole thing of pretty much the, the brain of the brain the size of a planet or the intelligence the size of you know all of this the the world's theoretical physicists and things like that you may be learning about Galileo and all sorts of other people but try to lighten the load a little bit especially if your parents struggle 
with things at the best of time, especially if life is uh, on a high stress. Try to crack some jokes a little bit. <laughs> Make it a little bit light-hearted and easygoing for everybody involved. Because life is hard enough as it is and you don't want yourself nor your parents falling out over something silly as a theoretical physicist theoretical physics equation you know just be gentle and be easy and if your teachers don't know how to deal with you don't go off the deep end with your teachers either understand they may never have experienced this or might not have come up in their teaching so they may be new to the teaching game or they might be one of the older teachers who is a little more strict. So understand that it's not aimed at you. Don't take the thing of, oh, can you not do that right now, to heart. Don't take the kind of, yes, that's brilliant, but not what we were looking for. Don't take that to heart. And if you're struggling with the simple things but you can do kind of like you know the super difficult stuff and the super long thinking stuff and you can do that in the blink of an eye don't worry it's normal you may have struggles we all have struggles you could be as smart as anything but you can still have problems with the simple things it's normal there's nothing wrong with you you're just wired differently. That's all it is. Is your brain is wired slightly differently to how the typical path is for everybody else. And you may think that you're alone in the world. You're not. There's hundreds, there's thousands, heck, there's even millions of us that have gone through the same experiences that you have. You are here, you are given a wonderful aspect of life. You've got something which many people out there wish that they had. And I wish that I could get it back. My genie was bottled a long time ago. And I wish I could uncork that bottle and bring that mother back. Because, god damn it, I miss being able to sit there with a book and breeze through it. Because the world is something that I never knew. Out there in that world it is something I never knew. It is a beast. And having a different view on the beast is a godsend. I have multiple views on that world and that beast but I would never say I want to have any of those views, feelings and opinions wiped away because the more opinions and the more feelings and the more views and the more abilities the better, the more well equipped you are. Don't ever give in don't ever give up. If you've sat there playing piano for a while and then you've gone kind of bored of this and you've gone on to playing like you know the clarinet, the, cor the cornet, the trumpet, the trombone, whatever and you've gone straight into it and you've fallen in love with that for a while and then you've bypassed that and you go no I'm not really interested in music anymore. I think sports might be it for me and you've gone into sports and you're not bothered about that anymore and you've done all sorts this is normal for how your brain works and how you build. Don't think it's something separate, something different. You are you, you are unique, you are the only you. Help it grow, help nurture yourself, help your parents help you nurture yourself. Never give in, never give up and never quit. Always keep on striving, keep on pounding, keep on going. Because you will get there in the end. My throat is raw now. So I'm going to quit while I'm ahead. 
because I am going on for 30 minutes. So, I will sign out. Peace, and see you in the stars.